All right, here we go. 2023 Indian Springfield versus the Indian Chief. And these two bikes basically share no similarities. I'm going to tell you every difference about them, what I think they're best for, right? And who they're best suited for, in my opinion, of course, and uh, which one I like the best and why. Now, before we start, big thanks to American Biker here in Ladson, South Carolina for giving me the opportunity to come out and bring these two reviews to you and putting these two bikes head to head and telling you honestly which one I like the best. That's pretty cool. So if you need anything like a new Indian or a used Harley, come talk to Rob at American Biker. So the first thing that we'll talk about is the aesthetic differences. We'll start at the front of the bike on the Springfield. You have this big cowling right here with the headlight encased in that. On the Chief, it's pretty much wide open. The Springfield has full fenders, okay? So this is basically a bagger without the fairing and the speakers and all of that kind of stuff, okay? So we have bob fenders on the Chief and you have a 16 inch spoked wheel on the Chief as opposed to a 19 inch aluminum wheel on the Springfield. And of course, not only is that an aesthetic difference, but that's gonna change the way they ride along with a number of other factors. Not only that, you actually have full LEDs across the front and the Chief, and you do have a halogen headlight on the Springfield with the LED turn signals. And of course, you get the uh, war bonnet there in the front on the Springfield, while this one is just clean, right? None of that stuff, not a lot of frills and stuff as far as the aesthetics. If we look at the tank, we got a four gallon tank compared to a five and a half gallon tank. Our cluster is right here in the middle of our riser while it's on the actual tank on the Springfield. One thing I do like about the way Springfield has set that up though, is it's kind of at an angle as opposed to just being straight here on the tank. So at least it makes reading that a little bit easier. One thing you'll notice is the pipes on the one side of the Chief, while you have dual pipes coming out of either side of the saddlebags on the Springfield. So literally every difference that you could think of, these bikes pretty much don't share any of that, including the shocks. And so you have preload adjustable shocks on the Chief, you have a single air adjust shock on the Springfield. So the Springfield is pretty much a bagger, right? It is a bagger without the fairing, without the speakers and any of those frills that come along with your Challenger and your Chieftains. You'll notice in the rear as well, the Chief has that bobbed fender. You got the license plate on the side over here. And then of course on the Springfield, you have a full fender. You got the bags. You, have, you actually have 28 gallons of storage in those bags. And so if you're somebody that likes to carry around equipment like I do or rain gear or you know, whatever the case may be, this is obviously going to be a better option. Not everybody wants to do that though. And so there are provisions that you can add to this, including a passenger setup if you want to, and some other storage options as well. But that's not what this bike is designed for. But again, it's not like a big heavyweight touring motorcycle as far as the Springfield. And so you're at, you know, 794 pounds in the Springfield where you're at 690 with the Indian Chief. You have a 25.6 inch seat height on the Springfield. You have a 26 inch seat height on the Chief. The Springfield gives you a little more ground clearance and it actually gives you a better lean angle. This one's 28 and a half inches, that one's 30. And then of course the Springfield has provisions for a passenger. It also has an adjustable uh, brake lever over here which the Chief does not. Both of them are keyless ignition and as far as the aesthetic differences, and some of the big differences as far as the outside of the bikes, that's pretty much it. But now we need to get in the saddle and talk about the biggest differences between these two, the way they ride and the seating position because it really makes or breaks it for me personally on these two bikes. Okay, first thing I wanna start with is the seating position of the Springfield. We have these mini apes they're pretty far forward and so my arms are stretched out my back is essentially straight up but my arms are stretched all the way out my feet are out in front of me i got these big open floorboards right here so plenty of room to stretch my feet out on. this one does not have a heel shifter by the way i really wish it did five gallon tank of course we got our fill cap over here 
we have our center console right here. One thing I like that they do that, that Harley doesn't do is that they put this cluster at an angle. So at least you can see it a little bit better as opposed to it just being straight down on the tank. Now we do have our, uh, our battery tender right here. Super convenient. I like that Indian does that. Keyless ignition, of course. As far as my my butt, it is firmly planted. They got a nice backrest, uh, at least for your lower back. Uh, as far as the stock seat, I feel like the cushion is pretty good. This area in here is a little awkward for me, uh, but at least it's far back enough where the tank doesn't really interfere, uh, you know, with my crotch. So that's pretty cool. We have hard locking bags. And so with the key fob or with the button right here on the dash, I can lock my bags and walk away. No fumbling around with a barrel key or anything like that. Also have uh, ride modes here. And so we can shuffle through these options. Looks like we have our uh, tire pressure, total miles, trip A, trip B, voltage, and we have an ambient air temp sensor. We also have our uh, gear indicator right there. Shows our miles per gallon, estimated anyways, and our range. And so we can go to the uh, right hand side as well, front and rear pressure, and then we have our ride modes. If we want to get into that, we just press and hold, and then we can select through those. It's not my favorite riding position in the world, but it's still not bad. And so one thing that this bike has going for it, which I was surprised about, I didn't talk about this in my original review of this bike, but this one has a 25 degree rake. And so that's why it feels so easy turning it into the corners because that front wheel is tucked up more under the bars than what it is on the Chief. It's actually a lower rake than what I thought on this bike. I mean, most of the time you're at 28 to 30 degrees, you know, for cruisers. So it is an interesting dynamic when you get on this one and you start turning and you're like, man, that thing turns in really quick. And so, uh, you know, I feel like the leverage on the bars for me personally isn't as good because of the way the bars are set. If these were a little bit higher and come back a little bit more, uh, I would definitely prefer that. We have an adjustable clutch lever right here. Of course, we have our power starter. Uh, we have our cruise control. And what I can do, I'm in standard mode now, and I can swap through the standard, tour, or sport mode. Sport mode is going to give us the most responsive throttle. And since we're about to get on the interstate, we can do that. Cylinder deactivation, that kicks on very quickly, but it tends to turn off really quickly as well. And again, our tire pressure. So we have a few more modes over here, or a few more options here. So this gives you quite a bit of information. We also have a fuel level gauge right there. Of course, it has ABS and all of that good stuff. Yeah, this seat has some good, good padding, just like the Challenger. We, of course, have our main fuel level gauge right there. You know, this is one of those bikes if, you know, similar to my grandfather. I, you know, I talked about this in the original review as well. He's older. He's ridden a, a lot of heavyweight cruisers or heavyweight baggers, I should say. And he just wanted something a little bit lighter, but still have, an, you know, some storage. He didn't need the big tour pack or anything like that anymore. He didn't even want the radio. You know, he's going to put a windshield on it and, you know, let it roll. And so that's a that's a good option because you save quite a bit of weight between this and the heavyweight baggers. Those dual disc up front, those brakes grab quickly. But you know, it's still something that you can take on the highway. You're gonna get beat up a little bit more as opposed to a challenger or a chieftain. Um, but of course, you know, adding a windshield, something like that, that's something I would absolutely do on this bike. And you know, I always say with bikes like this, I would add some kind of a radio. I understand that most people probably that buy this bike don't really care about that, or they just have it in their helmets. So it, you know, they see no use for it. Um, 
I, I don't personally like having that stuff in my helmet so that's why I'd say I would add an external uh, you know setup but like I said man you know everybody's different there is no denying the torque of this 116 dude There's also no denying the power of a windshield. I got something flapping on my helmet, it's driving me nuts. But we got a six gear transmission, we're going 75. And fortunately there's enough weight where I don't really have to do a whole lot of, you know, back and forth and, you know, trying to, uh, you know, crack the bike a whole lot. It, it holds a good line. These bars are not far out, as kids used to say. They're too far out. These things need to come back to you a little bit, man. Hey, big thanks to American Biker for letting me come out and test out these two bikes. I really like the 116. It is amazing how much torqueier it feels compared to the 111 that we just rode last week. It is a monster. So, I got my thoughts together on this one. Now, let's ride the Chief. Let me tell you what I think about this one. Now we have the Chief Bobber. I compared the regular Chief to the regular Indian Scout. And, uh, one thing I instantly like better about this one already is the mini apes they put on here. It is a similar riding position to the Springfield, but I'm not nearly as stretched out over the tank. It's a smaller tank um, and the, the rise is a little bit greater. Uh, I feel like the bars come back to you a little bit more as well. So I'm uh, my, my arms are more relaxed as opposed to being straight out in front of me. I have forward pegs instead of floorboards. It's one of those things. They both have a Torquey 116, which is uh, impressive. Now what's cool about this one is I have my ride command. And so we have weather updates, we have Bluetooth, we have our gear indicator, which is digital. We have an analog speedometer. We have our fuel level gauge. And we have an analog tack right there as well. We're gonna take the old route that we used to take. How about that? And while I feel like the Springfield is more of a light touring machine, cruiser, bike night, short runs. This one can fit those rolls better, but I feel like it's a better around town ripper. Which is where I really like this motorcycle. We do have our sport modes over here. We can change our sport modes too, by the way. There's another, uh, there's a little bit different screen. I haven't, I haven't seen that one. Maybe I just missed it. So that gives us a digital speedometer and an analog tack. Feet are out in front of me, like God intended. And a high beam, low beam, cruise control. It's got pretty much you know everything that the other bike has, except it does have provisions here to be able to change the stuff either with this button here or the back button here. You can tell the smoothness 
from that single rear shock to the dual shocks. This one you feel all of those bumps. Whereas the Springfield, it just kind of glides right over it. Just another thing that lends itself well to being a touring machine. If we press and hold the right side, that's going to give us a different screen here where we can see all the layouts. We got our ride mode or our current ride. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can feel all of that. Chatter in my teeth, boys. This is a little bit easier to read. I don't have to take my eyes nearly as far down, although the other one I do like the way they've set it up on the tank where it's angled towards you. This one is just easier. It's in a better location. The seat is hard as a rock compared to that Indian though. It's their gunfighter seat. It is not comfortable at all. There's our ride modes. We got a buttons down here as well. So it gives you a good mixture of um, manual buttons and some touchscreen options as well. This one is actually 120 foot pounds compared to 126. How much of that are you gonna feel? Probably not much because this one is 100 pounds lighter. So they feel very similar when it comes to the torque. I mean, this is a powerhouse and this size of bike. It does have rear cylinder deactivation, just like the Springfield. Man, it really just comes down to the, to the riding position, I think. There's things I could do to both bikes to make them suit my needs better. But of course, we're just looking at them stock for stock. There's things from the Springfield I'd like to have on this one. Those floorboards being one of them. You know, this is a $20,000 machine. I just, I do not like those pegs. You know, it really just depends if, you know, you want a, something maybe a little more zippy. You know, this one definitely feels like it has a little more get up and go to it. You know, 100 pounds lighter, basically the same specs. And I do like the way the bars are positioned on this one compared to the Springfield. That Springfield turns in so quick to the corners though. It is, uh, it's impressive. I, I did not realize the rake on that thing until I, uh, was looking up some stuff about them for this video. It makes sense though. And even then, I still feel like the Springfield is really good in a straight line. You know, it's really stable because of that weight. I definitely like the Ride Command better. I think it, it, it just gives you way more options and it's a uh, Oh, just way more useful than a standard gauge and you know, I mean that to me that's a, pretty much a no-brainer though I like the position of this better than I do the Springfield I don't know I got some more things to consider let's get back to the shop I'll tell you which one I like the best and why this one feels like it wants to throw you off the bike <laughs> When you lay into that throttle at all on this thing, man, that ledge on the Springfield really does a better job of keeping you planted. This one's got so much torque mixed with that weight that it just wants to... Well, it's a, it's a, it's a combination with that and the seed, though, honestly. Okay. So here's where we are with the two bikes. I like... First of all, with the Springfield, I like the seat better. I like that you have more capacity with the tank. Um, the bagger look does it for me, man. They did a really nice job. They're both dark horses, both blacked out. Really like that stuff, okay? Full fender, dual pipes out, you know, one out of each underneath the saddlebags, the floorboards. This one does a really good job, and what I do like specifically is this lip. 
<laughs> man that thing helps to keep you planted in the seat you'll notice with this one not only is it kind of hard as a rock it looks good but it's hard but there's no lip here so when you hit that throttle it uh it'll surprise you and it acts like it wants to throw you off the back of the bike there i also like the suspension setup on this one i think it is a much more comfortable ride i love the fact that this one comes with leds all the way around man that's that's huge i do like the uh spoke wheels on this one it helps to kind of give you that old school look and so they pay homage to uh you know the old chiefs like that and so on this specific bike i like it now i like the cast wheels better just pure aesthetics but on this bike the wire wheels fit well the ride command ride command on this one is superior to what you have on the springfield no doubt i also like the handlebars and the rise that they give you on here to me it's a much more comfortable position i like the side license plate i think it just looks good uh it's got a really nice aesthetic when you compare the two here you know this looks good but it's just much different than this right here when we compare the the rear of the bike uh you know they they're so wildly different i mean it's really for me personally i like both of them i like the the bobbed fenders but i also like the full fender with the bags you know the the slammed bags it just it's got a really nice look you know but i see both of these bikes kind of in the same role you could do light touring on this one obviously um and you could do light touring on this one i mean it's got enough power to me i see both of these bikes as like a second type of bike you know what i mean because i like my fairing i like my radio you know i like all those comforts and stuff that's just that's just what i like so i see both of them as a second bike um i i don't know man i just i feel like the 28 and a half degree lean angle on this one limits you a little bit i just like the way the springfield rides better than the chief i i like the bags i like the motor on both of them but i like the way that one delivers the power and i also like the fact that you you get those ride modes and stuff the only thing i you know that makes me hesitate is the aesthetics on this one i think i actually like better i also really like that ride command and so ride command on the springfield would be a much needed upgrade uh man i just like the way the springfield is set up and i like the way it rides better than the chief this is a tough one man there's a lot of things i really like about the chief that i just talked about but i think for my money i'd go with the springfield and they're equally priced kind of you know you got about four thousand dollar difference there and i think with the things i could do with this would be a more enjoyable bike than this that's where i'm at with it man i'd love to hear your opinion if you like this comparison maybe you'll like this one i did with the chief and the indian scout big thanks to you guys see you in the next one and as always hold them down